Season 1, Jeff, Barracuda, and the North American Sweethearts bring it home under the banner of Cognitive Prime. No one thought had a chance at the finals coming into this event. Coming as a number two. Oh, I'm out of there! I'm out of there! Ripping through! Titan down, falls three! A double kill for itself! It's yeah, a five-man! They're gonna go for the win! The world champions! Cognitive Prime! GG! Season 2, we say hello to Europe as Adapting and Epsilon Esports slam it home. A huge play. Adapting's about to go up. He's going to come crashing down. Who's the target? It's going to be all three, and two will get stunned out. Oh, no. He's going to take tons of damage. Oh, no. Chaos Force will move forward. They don't Adapting have enough time for this. Again. They don't have enough time for this. No, it's a deicide. Ladies and gentlemen, Epsilon Esports. Season 3. New name, same roster. Two-time world champions, Raffer and NRG. Well, there's four members left, and into the sky goes adapting. The ultimate's way down. The Titan is under siege. Energy are looking to be world champions again. Long live the king. And once again, the king is Europe. Season four. Polar Bear Mike brings it back for America. E United slams the hammer. He's gonna get cracking the knock back. There's Death Walker controlling things. Panda can't take that Wolfie. Where's the remainder of the team fight? Death Walker That's one. But Adu and E United keeps on going because Panda can't take two. Still pushing forward. They're at the Titan. Only two members to play defense. They can't do it. And that's the game. That's the series. That is your Snipe World Championship. Say hello to your North American victors, Paula Bear Mike and EU United. Season 5, new map, new players, new teams, same destination. Who raises Thor's hammer? The Smite Pro League. Happy Friday. It's me, Tom Battinger, joined here by him, Anatoly Alexeyna. And today, we've got the Smite Pro League, the conclusion of week number four. Jeez, we're so close to HRX, it's absolutely ridiculous. Here's some of the games that we saw throughout the week, and today, Space Station taking on Trifecta, and e United trying to stay undefeated versus Luminosity. A lot of spicy games earlier on this week. Energy taking out Dignitas yesterday, rival in a complete slobber knocker, securing their victory over Obey Alliance. Today's matches should be an interesting feat. Trifecta have a tall task ahead of themselves. Yeah, Space Station has been relatively successful, but certainly has had their lapses in judgment. They're going to have to clean things up if they want to be victors at HRX this year, November 16th through the 18th. All you have to do to come is buy tickets, HiResExpo.com. That gets you in the door. Smite, Paladins, a bunch of other games as well. Definitely something you don't want to miss. And you don't want to miss that main event after party on Sunday night. $50 gets you through the door. HRXAfterParty.Eventbrite.com. Finch got something planned for you. Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting event. You're not going to want to miss it. Miss it, excuse me. But that's all what we do in person. If you're going to be stuck in at home, go ahead and link your account. Because if you can't hang out with us in person, you might as well hang out with us here. And if you're hanging out with us here, you might as well get some free stuff for it. Link your Smite account with your Mixer account. You get Pro League Bologna right off the bat. And then as you watch, you're eligible to win gems and other cosmetics and all sorts of fun stuff. So make sure you link your account because you're watching anyway. Should be an interesting matchups today, honestly. I'm looking forward to North America because the standings are is what really matters today. Yes. Here we are, Europe on top. North America is what we're looking at right now. E United undefeated so far, 6-0. And they've only dropped a single game in all of their sets. That's why they're plus 11 at the moment. Splice has superseded Space Station Gaming. Now is Space Station's chance to find another win in their column. But, of course, Splice has taken that number two spot. Space Station really need to find their way up to number two because the top two teams are the ones that are auto-qualifying into passing the placement stage and going directly to Worlds at HRX. So you want to find yourself in those two. Well, if history repeats itself, these two teams faced off in that week number one matchup where Space Station got the better end of Trifecta. And considering that Trifecta are on the up and up, yes, uh, 
earlier this week, finding their victory over uh, CLG could be difficult for Space Station today. It certainly could be. Trifecta, as you said, kind of on the up and up, these guys. What's the biggest change here for Trifecta that you've liked? Well, the way that they're playing off of their mid lane, Paul is no longer being this reckless, aggressive mid laner. Sanford Soccer has been known to make some plays here and there, and Scary D has certainly made the plays happen to find some of the early picks to transition to that mid-game form. I'd actually go in the other direction. I think Paul has gotten the aggression back. Paul was a pub stop character in the minor league, and then when he came to the pro league, that was one of my reservations, was that he was going to continue with that play style despite coming up to a league with more competitive players against him. But he dialed it back and was a little bit more reserved. Last time we saw Paul, he brought out the Hebo, one of his go-to characters in the minor league, and he did bring out that reckless aggression and it's what allowed his team to win so uh, i'm actually going to be on the other side of that totally i think paul's reckless aggression has finally come out here in the pro league and it's actually a giant boon for trifecta they looked really strong playing off of their mid laner across the way space station gaming certainly uh the crowd favorites you know, so many people have really loved to watch Barracuda, Jeff Hinla kind of do their thing. Now, uh, they've got a new mid laner, Venenu, kind of stepping in here. And a lot of people like to look at these trades as in one team versus the other. Who won the trade? But at the end of the day, it's more, you got to look at things more in a vacuum for once and say, is the team better or worse with Venenu? And I think there is some warm up time, but Venenu might, over the course of uh, an extended period of time, might be the better fit. If you look at it, not in a vacuum, but in the all, overall grand scheme of things, EU United probably got the better end of that trade. But I think the chemistry for both teams has gotten a lot better. I think that everyone from Space Station Gaming is still playing comfortably. The problem is that they need to start finding some victories here because they just recently lost to EU United for the second time this split. Lost also against Splice in week number three. And in order to find that cohesiveness is off of their jungler. Anister is going to need to start stepping it up. Last time, it was Baskin taking away a lot of his farm and therefore it kind of hurt Anister. This time around, he has no more excuses. He needs to be that engagement personality that he's been known back in season one. Lack of consistency, consistency certainly has been, I think, Anister's problem and then Space Station's problem at large. Aquarius has been kind of nice to watch in the beginning of the year, but didn't really keep that steam. Space Station has certainly fallen just a little bit here in the fall split, so a little bit rough watching them go on. Trifecta, however, should still be a competent opponent, but an opponent that a Space Station should be able to take here. Uh, Trifecta, of course, will have the first pick and the first ban, SSG across the way. I'm expecting a lot of contention over that Chernabog and Freya, whether that's going to go in the mid or otherwise. Last week, Paul did bring out the Habwa. It wouldn't surprise me if we see it again here in week four to conclude it. First ban's coming out, no, on her. We've seen a lot of that from Space Station Gaming. In the middle lane, when Baskin was on the team, Vinayne, who certainly has it, uh, and the hunter, uh, the hunter player, Barracuda, can play pretty much whatever he wants. So banning out the on her, who's been very effective as of late. Also, the Rat of Tasker. Space Station Gaming, on the other hand, looking for more bur burst-oriented characters. No Pele, no Freya. Trifecta with the first pick. It doesn't surprise me that on her was banned away, considering that Panic Hat from the United Likes said Barracuda follows suit, and with the introduction to Pele now in week number four. A lot of teams experimenting with it, with the soul lane, the jungle side, a little bit more success in the jungle. And if you're second pick, you don't want to give that over. Global Guardian on the left side is met with the Global Hunter on the right. SSG yeah, going to grab up Chernabog for maybe Barra, maybe middle lane Venenu. We'll keep an eye on it. Baron Somni, maybe solo, maybe support. We've seen Jeff Hindler play this more so than the other supports. So I'm uh, kind of thinking that we're going to see Baron Sabati in the in the long lane. It's very possible, honestly, knowing how Space Station Gaming likes to have the control in the dual lane. Baron Sabati is going to be able to not only heal himself, but Barracuda as well if he gets into danger. So I'm expecting a lot of early purple buff invades out of Space Station. Keep an eye on in the jungle. Uller, again, oh more ambiguity. Unsure if it's going to be in the hands of Paul or of Zatman. Both of them have standout Uller play. Serket, though, I'm pretty sure that's in the jungle. We'll see Sam for Soccer playing that one for sure. And then SSG with Robin selected. That's going to be a jungle pick. Second round of bands coming out. And SSG saw Paul last time. No more Hebo, buddy. Not going to be available as he was banned out there. And Space Station Gaming looking for their secondary ban will ban out the Ryzen. On the other side, no Medusa, which again can kind of play both mid and hunter role, which is why I like that. And then Venenu's classic and uh, storied 
the Morrigan, that's going to be unavailable as well. Doing a lot of their homework as Space Station Gaming, really focusing out, Paul. If they want to continue this further, they would go for the Agony, potentially, in that mid lane. But no, going for Double Hunters instead makes mm -hmm. a little bit of sense. Paul has been known to run the Chernobog from time to time, so Space Station locked that in early. Expect to see Venanu pilot the Chernobog. Fafnir here means that Athena is going to be off roll, likely in that in that uh, solo lane. Fafnir, Fafnir can theoretically solo, but if you just stand in the middle of the wave and intercept the hammer, yeah. then he can't solo. So I think it's a little bit tougher for the dwarf. Athena will find her way over there on the short side in the late game hunter Shibalanke. That's that man. Oh yeah, I like this combination honestly, Shibalanke. Uller with the Fafnir for the coerce, but a little bit lack of magical damage. A little difficult to confirm some of Fafnir's abilities. They're going to need to play a little bit of setup. Uh, the early to mid game magical damage non existent. It's mm -hmm. only the late game once the magical damage is going to start to shine, which means Space Station Gaming can build into physical defense and delay that magical. Also, the same situation on SSG's side. Double Hunter means lack of magical damage. Baron Somebody does like to play hybrid, so he'll be a sure. little bit more effective. Uh, uh, then the Athena Fafnir combo, Kuzinbo as well, will be a great look versus the Double Hunter. Will it be the hometown hero, Space Station Gaming, or Trifecta with their recent roster changes taking this one? Of course, it is a best of three, so you've got to keep that in mind, Anatoly. But honestly, when we see the Double Hunter, it's usually matched on the other side with something different. We've got Double Hunter versus Double Hunter here. How are you feeling about this game? Space Station, because of the Kuzumbo last pick, the Reflect against Double Hunters means that Aquarius is going to be able to build into height of the Nemean line, make it so difficult for both Paul and Zapman to do Hunter things. Trifecta on the up and up, trying to make things happen. Space Station Gaming trying to prevent their recent slide from getting even worse. Casters, take us to game number one. Thank you so much, Analyst Dex. Myself and Taco will be joining you for this broadcast today of Trifecta versus Space Station Gaming. Space Station, as the desk was saying, Taco, a bit of a downtrend as of late, not finding the wins they're after. And Trifecta on the upswing. It definitely had both sides of the spectrum between the positives and the negatives. It's been a lot of highs and lows so far for Space Station here yeah. in the fall split, but this is still a good chance for them to continue trying to turn things around in a more favorable direction. They're already in a, a little bit of an awkward position here because of that loss against Splice. Yeah. Now every set counts more than ever before. For sure, and especially because if you're the top two in the league, you will automatically qualify to the DreamHack stage. If not, you'll have to go through placements where the rest of the world some man league teams will be waiting too at the moment in this one though we see barracuda have to beat zilly against neilmar as the hammer does connect and zatman just swinging away on jeff who's playing this support baron not seeing as much support barons of a late taco this is more of a, an aggressive stance here from space station it's them trying to send a direct message that they want to control the duo lane and Baron can provide a lot of clear and pressure in terms of slows and the like to help better handle that lane. But I think the main reason why we see the downturn of Baron over in duo is because we, he's just so much more popular in solo. That's fair. But in the solo now, we're going to have the Athena up against the Kuzumbo and uh, almost beautiful body blocks from our Aquarius there to lock Scary D in. But talking a little bit about the compositions, Anatoly says, you know, he feels this Kuzumbo is going to be the one that's going to be the difference with double hunters for both teams, Taco. But then again, Trifecta do have a Fafnir to even empower those Hunters. But I think that empowering your Hunters into a Kuzumbo uh, could, be could be a little bit more problematic than beneficial here because that just means that they're probably going to be doing more damage to themselves as well. It's also forcing Zatman and Paul to lean more towards attack speed, penetration-based builds as opposed to Venenu and Barracuda who have a little bit more Wiggle flexibility yeah. in which one of them can choose to go crit-based, the other could go attack speed and pen. It, it all just depends on what space station feel more comfortable running. And I think that's the difference in the composition here. Trifecta definitely Paul in the mid lane going to be looking for power and pen anyway, playing the all, not so much the crit options, but this hammer from Neil Mark is going to connect. Jeff could be in a bit of trouble here. They are hunting friendly. they will get the hammer. Jeff realized what was going on, but just couldn't do anything about it. Beautiful play from Neil Mar and Zapman in the laning phase. Just too little too late for Jeff to respond. He'd already expended the sprint, and it just wasn't enough to get him away. Nice job by Neil Mar as well yeah. to jump in there. Even though Zap's final auto probably would have confirmed the kill, it's better to just 
make sure that Jeff dies than miss out on the opportunity. It's about time, though, that I've seen this jawline from Trifecta really start to kick it up a notch a little bit more so. Neil Mar and Zatman between them, you've got the youth and inexperience and the excitement of being to the Pro League like Neil Mar has with more recent, and Zatman's experience should pay off. But talking about experience right now, this blue buff invade from Aquarius is getting him in a lot of trouble. Ambush is going to be good, but Scary D's Breach is going to be the first one to claim the kill there onto Aquarius, and it's their came over as well to try and help out with the invade. But the blue buff still falls in Scary D's favor. Not only that, but now Aquarius is going to end up losing his own to Sam for Soccer. Yeah, and Sam for Soccer will take this one down as well. The newest addition to the Trifecta roster with Sam Fusaka entering into the jungle after Mask's departure from Pro League play now. How's he been doing, Taco? I think that Sam has been fitting the mold about as well as he possibly could have. When he first came in, things were incredibly shaky. Keep in mind, they didn't have Zapman for one of those games out of their initial debut set, yeah. so things were bound to look a little bit sloppy. And I, I think that ever since, Trifecta have made a, a very clear understanding that they do not want to be the last contending team before the NASPL, and I think that they're well on their way to being there. In, in a sense, it, it kind of has a, a lot of similarities to what happened over there in Europe with Mouse in my mind, because yeah. Mask had already alluded to the fact of maybe wanting to take his departure from pro league play for since uh, I think even the start of summer, right around while, that period, sure. it, was, it was definitely wearing off on him. And to me, that kind of speaks a lot about what the team environment might have looked like. And perhaps even this duo lane, that might be why we see this sudden surge of, of Zetman being a little bit more disciplined, Zetman being a little bit more cleaned up, I, I think, and, and Neil Maul as well. And it's probably just because of the fact that now Trifecta are able to scrim with players who all want to be there. Yeah, and this discipline from Trifecta is starting to come through now. Paul has really found his pace in the mid lane and actually helped this transition of Sam for soccer join the team a little bit easier because he's been holding his own a little bit more so in the mid lane, making a very good transition from minor league play to the pro league. He's working on his transcendence, has that stacking up now, as is Venenu, who's playing the Chernobog this game. We've seen a lot of Venenu on the Morrigan just lately, but this time round, different choices. Trying to mix him up. And I like it. Into the Uller, you probably want another Hunter anyway, just to make sure that Paul doesn't get free pressure during the laning phase. Not to mention that uh, Chernobog alone is such a prominent pick right now in the meta. Sam Fusaka was invading the blue buff and finds good old Anninster in the jungle. Ult for ult trade is Venenu comes in, but so does Scary D. Aquarius on the chase and the Nene Nay Kappa will come into play. The root doesn't find Sam Fusaka as Venenu gets torn into an awkward position and has to beads and dash away. Into darkness goes Venenu as he's still trying to dash away, but Neoma is more interested in keeping the engage going. Gonna get a nice stun there onto Aquarius, but Jeff's life of the party gonna drag in too. Oh, that cancel from Neoma is just gonna slow them down and meanwhile Venenu was way Waiting around the corner, but Sam for soccer and Paul collapse. Another kill for Trifecta, and they will steal the blue buff and get out of dodge before Andy can get back in the fight. Couldn't ask for a better rotation there out of Paul. Oh, Just Andy. in the nick of time. Andy is full health now, but he's going to get taunted in and bursted immediately. Hardly hanging on to life now. Ambush is all it really heal. takes to finish him off. The heal from Jeff was so big to keep Andy out. Paul's got to dash away now, but they're going it into enemy territory to survive. It's the wrong half of the map. Aquarius still giving chase, Aegis down on pull. Robin wrapping round the back again. The sumo slam closes the gap, the feet, the hands are good. And Andy takes down Paul after a very delayed chase. The jukes from Andy could not have been better. And Sam probably kicking himself right now for just jumping the gun a little bit too soon with that ambush. Had to watch where Andy was wiggling to before overshooting it. All this going on at the same time, a whole minion wave gets lost in the mid lane. Venenu died in the engagement at the start. But the chase around the jungle took so long that he got back to lane, pushed out the wave, and denied some farm in the mid lane. So let's have a look at the experience gap then between the two. Trifecta, in terms of kills in the first blood, definitely have the advantage there. But the experience is marginal here, Taco. It's not that important. Not so much after that last engagement, I feel, even, because Trifecta spent so much time over there on Space Station's turf. Uh, Space Station, uh, Andy, you saw what he was doing. He wasn't a participant in that engagement when Venenu originally died because yeah. he was too busy farming. And then he came into the team fight. But uh, those little bits and pieces are what Space Station really need to keep track of so Ooh. us to not fall behind. Nice little play from Venenu there. Jeff didn't like the result because he's got a hammer in the face. But the main thing is the mid laner does survive there. Andy now grouping up with Jeff and Venenu towards the mid lane to farm up some more. 
Nothing really available in the jungle to take. Purple buff on the left hand side and blue buff on the right hand side for Space Station are about to respawn. And that's exactly where Sam Pasaka's looking here towards Barracuda's neck of the woods. Barra gonna be forced out of the mounted archery and his purification beats pretty early on, not wanting to take any chances with the last breath. But living nightmare for free as well here. Trifecta getting away with all of it thanks to Sam. Yeah, it worked out well. I mean, Sam Pasaka just got, what, beads and two ultimates? Good situation for Trifecta to be in then at the moment. Look at how this stands, and they're not letting up yet. Neil Mars now on this right hand side, roaming around. Very um, a raw esque. This is what I want to say with this play. Come to the solo. I, I will say, though, uh, Trifecta, ooh, hold that thought. Aquarius here trying to defend his own blue buff. Won't be successful at the moment, we'll but he is going to be looking to burst down Scary D. One more is going to do it. Just one auto attack, and Andy finally connects right as Gary D was starting to disappear. I'm giving the credit to the Nene Kappa there. He was swinging away just as much as the Kuz was, and that worked out well. Three for three. Credit for the kill going over towards Aminster, I believe, there. He's working a little bit more so on some defense, which we've seen a little bit more out of these jungles. A lot of shields in the jungle these days. By the way, did you hear the constant cancellation of Defender of Olympus thanks to Aquarius' ultimate? One of the more yeah. annoying aspects of, of trying to deal with this Kuzumbo is in order to channel that, you've got to be able to aim it. You've got to just, you need an extra second. That's all it is. And you only get point of one, which is where the power of the War Tui Grave really comes from here. So Hunters in the mid lane now have their Warrior Tabby online. Hunters in the duo lane, both going for Devourer's Gauntlet, stacking those up nicely. Barracuda with a bit of a lead there, at least in terms of stacks, but not in experience. Zetman should have a, a little bit of the edge there, considering that it was the dual lane that managed to secure first blood. Speaking of which, Paul, looking like he almost stole away that red buff with the Hail of Arrows, but just going to come up short on the matter. Oracles will, however, go in favor of Trifecta, and as a result, Jeff making sure to keep the area warded. Trifecta playing with confidence right now, though, having Sam Pasaka going very deep on this circuit in the jungle, and Neilmar happy to just throw hammers in faces and see if any of them stick for the most part. And Trifecta keeping themselves in very good standing here against Space Station. As we mentioned, they're looking to be a major part of getting themselves climbing in the standings. And recent performances are showing it's working out for them. I think the one thing that I do feel Trifecta have more of in comparison to Space Station is crowd control. I, I like the Athena for initiation better than a Baron or Kuzumbo. I, I think that also a lot of the responsibility for engaging is going to have to fall onto Anninster here yeah. if they really want to get off a successful team fight. And so that can make the early to mid game a little bit more awkward for Space Station because Andy's really the only one with a super favorable laning matchup. Zatman's not going to really be pressured out and so he'll be rather difficult to try and gank. He's been playing fairly passive also just Respecting the fact that if Bear is going to play back, then I can just chill and farm too. Hammer to the face of Barracuda again. His beads are available. He doesn't want to use them if he can help it, but it is going to force his mounted archery as the extra range that Zatman was about to get from the Darkest of Nights was going to make an impact. Completely mandatory ultimate from Barracuda. Doesn't really have a choice there, but it's this constant forcing out of Barra from the lane that has yeah. given Zatman just a slight lead in terms of experience. But what I'm mostly keeping an eye out for is when Zatman hits level 12, because then he'll have the secondary relic and Trifecta will have the advantage when pressuring or forcing a team fight in which Barra might not necessarily have his Aegis available for. And when you talk about those team fights, I guess the next one we're really looking at and where Trifecta's power play could be is around the Gold Fury. If they get those level 12s a little bit earlier, they could look for a play with the Hunters they have. The burst is interesting. It's definitely a, a trade-off between all these fights of who would get an objective in a straight-up five-on-five fight there. It'd probably be a little bit more favored towards Trifecta. Fafnir? It, just because of the Fafnir, not only that, but Paul also has the best confirm in the game right now. I think the only other ability I would really give uh, a big burst advantage towards would maybe be Andy on the Mystic Rush, but Robin for objective secured. Normally, your yeah. Robin jungler is going to be harassing the back line and looking for a carry pick. Looking for Zatman right now is what Andy was trying to do, but instead he's just going to have to soak up a bit of farm. Barrow won't be too excited about that as he's already behind against Zatman in the lane, but Sharon is Sharon. And it's Karen too. Three to three in the standings here so far, and... Honestly, I'm happy with how Trifecta have looked in this one. I want them to keep the pace going, though, because for a moment or two, it's kind of slowed all of a sudden. Sam for soccer hasn't found as many invades as he'd like to, I feel like, and the aggressive path. And Andy's starting to hit that stride here on the Robin. 
It feels like Space Station or, or Trifecta had that little bit of a hiccup around the Fire Giant Pit when they were trying to invade Aquarius' blue buff. They realized just how much time they spent over there, and so it, that might have forced them to be more hesitant than what they originally intended with this composition. But speaking of which, Scary D under duress yet again. This time around, though, Defender of Olympus will be more than enough to get him out oh, of there. Oh, Jeff just got away by Sam Fusaka, using the life of the party to keep himself topped up in health for now. And manages to get out for the axe from Paul Connects. And Jeff gets brought down by Zap. And then who goes to the sky? The slows will make an impact as he dives towards the back. Looking for a character. Aquarius is in amongst the fight now, looking towards Neilma. Neilma's getting interrupted right now, thanks to the Watery Grave. Aquarius, one more gonna do it, but Neil, he's nearly got his jump over the wall, but he won't be able to make it out in time. In fact, Space Station, they take down Neilma, now they're looking for the Gold Fury. Scary D is back in this fight now, but Andy's on zone duty. Gold Fury's getting very low, but everyone's facing towards Aminster, and that's actually gonna make Space Station drop that Gold Fury, surprisingly enough. So nobody ends up getting that. In the end, the Oracles go to Space Station Gaming. Nobody really comes out on top. Wait for it. I I don't trust this hint, dude. This yeah. feels like someone is going to try and be cheeky with this Gold Fury pool. I don't know. I, I think the Oracles are going down there. I think that was kind of the but end. But it was for it. Space Station. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't think Trifecta feel confident in going for it knowing that Space Station have vision. I wanted to see Space Station pull it. Paul and Zatman were both half health or less. Yeah. And I think that Sam might have been around the area somewhere, but still not healthy enough to try and engage on his own because you need follow-up for that. And I don't think that Paul or Zatman could have gotten any closer than what they were. And with Space Station, all of their members still right there at the Gold Fury Pit as well. I, I definitely feel like Space Station maybe could have prompted a little bit further aggression there, but... I guess they just don't want to take any chances with Scary D. Blue buff invades continuing, but Aquarius this time will secure his own one as he's now level 13, still keeping pace with Scary D in this lane, as you'd expect between these two Guardians. The junglers did try and rotate over there, but look at this at the Gold Fury. Trifecta committing, Athena coming in too. Vara, Jeff, and Nenu, and the all watching. All they ever wanted to begin with was a fight, and Paul's already going to take down Wait, Barracuda. What? One hunter removed already, but Life of the Party is sucking everybody right back into it. Scary D takes out Jeff. Sam goes down with Enster, and now Venenu is going to oh. be the final casualty of war here. It's a four for nothing exchange, and the only reason why Aquarius is even alive is because he wasn't there. What was Barra doing? Did he? Was he facing the wrong direction? I don't know. Like, I've been known Barra a long time, but I've never seen him just run through a fight on a horse like that before and just slowly get picked apart when he was trying to get away. I guess the call was to go aggressive, but right at the same time, everybody shot past him, diving the back line. And Trifecta win a huge fight there for them. Catapults them now in terms of gold heavily. You can see it on the charts. It's 1,200 just off that one team fight and the experience to boot an additional 1,500. I think the intention from Barrow was maybe to get that mounted archery slow off onto everybody to better set up Jeff's life of the party, but by the time all the working pieces started coming together, Trifecta had already bursted down Barra. They were steadily working on Venenu. Jeff is forced out. Speaking this of which, Scary though. D now, this could be a promising fight here for Aquarius. Yeah, Paul hits the accent to Aquarius. Neilma on the back line trying to slow them down, but Paul gets poked out by Andy. And Andy's still giving chase, but the Mystic Rush does connect. But no further follow up available thanks to the sprint from Neilma. Trifecta will escape, but they don't get the Pyromancer all the while. Barracuda. Looking for a tier one tower. That's exactly what they were waiting for. Sam now wants to get a little bit frisky here with Anixer. A nice taunt in from Scary D is going to ensure that Andy comes back in unwillingly, and last breath should do it. He didn't get the kill there as Aquarius is dealing with the carries on the backside. Paul's still trying to fight against this cousin Bo, who's getting relatively low. Scary D zoning away. Jeff, Sam is here looking for a kiss, maybe. He finds out Aquarius, but he just drags him towards Venenu. So he sumo slums away. Venenu taking on three, jumps in the wall, but that man. He's there to get level 15 and claim his life. Trifecta now on the Pyromancer. Just too many body blocks available, and Barracuda just now starting to make his way over, but I don't think Trifecta are interested in the Fire Giant. They definitely just wanted the Pyromancer. It's the fact that Space Station tried to initiate beautiful disengage out of Trifecta, and by the time Space Station decided we should look at this Pyromancer, Trifecta had already managed to come back into the Fire Giant Pit. I think the biggest issue that Space Station are having in this game, Taco, is getting away from the fight when they're finished. Whenever they try and disengage, you've got Athena chasing you, you've got Sir Ket chasing you, Paul and Neilmar, they can also chase relatively well. 
And in worst case scenario, Zap's still got his ult up. He can slow them down some more. This is where Trifecta are finding the, the power play of disengaging on and then re-engaging on their own terms. And I love how patient Sam has been this match as well. He hasn't just been tossing out the last breath. Even though he could utilize it for a little bit better control and setup for his team, the fact that he's been using it as a, a bit of an execute, essentially, for Andenser, I think, is exactly the reason why Trifecta were able to come out so huge from that last engagement because Andy is a large part of the damage right now for Space Station, and without him, that responsibility fell onto Venenu because Vera was still over in duo. He managed to trade out a T1 tower, opens up a little bit of map pressure, maybe trying to create a diversion, but no one from Trifecta was even remotely concerned about Vera continuing to split push. I think the biggest thing from Trifecta too, you mentioned it earlier on, is they've definitely got more CC this game than Space Station Gaming. A lot of Space Station Gaming's crowd control is relatively limited here. A couple of roots, you know, a bit of displacement with the fact of Kuzumbo there. But the rest of them generally slows and roots. It's not that impactful, is it, compared to the, you know, the other side of the coin when you've got so many stuns, taunts, beads burn, it's galore. And Trifecta are finding wins because of this. And, and I think slow compositions or compositions based around ability slows are definitely very yeah. viable, but in this particular instance, Space Station's only real forms of slows is Barracuda's Mounted Archery and then Jeff Hinla along with Aquarius. But one of them being an ultimate is typically not the way you want to go about a, a slow composition. And, and so I think Space Station's main intent here was to just try and burst down Trifecta before Trifecta had a chance to really look to control them in the engagements. But it just hasn't really come to fruition because of how well Trifecta have positioned their carries around each other. Space Station is really struggling in this game, and I don't know why they're trying to defend this tier one now as Neil Mob commits, but anyone already used the dash, has to use the beads as well. The chase may still be on under that tier two if they want to. They've got a nice group in here, Trifecta. Space Station a little bit split, trying to re reinforce the middle lane. But Trifecta not going to continue there. They're happy with the result of the tier one in left and the tier one in the middle lane. So their gold lead just slowly continues growing. Not only that, but Zatman as well, farming out this jungle here from Space Station. They're not even safe in their own side of the map as all of Trifecta are here for this red buff. Now both Paul and Zap get their own. And with the Gold Fury right on the line of respawning here, I can imagine that's going to be Trifecta's next area of attack. Yeah, I'm looking towards Aquarius in these team fights. He's going to have to make a big impact. And he's had a great year, Aquarius, so far. But this is definitely one of those games at this stage now where he's going to have to do a lot for his team because he's the one with the most amount of crowd control, I'd say, here. And the ability to tank a lot of the damage that Trifecta have. He's just going to find himself in the right windows of opportunity. One thing I have noticed, though, is that whenever all of Space Station is grouped up, it's been very close calls for Trifecta on some of these disengages. Even that one prior to Trifecta winning the team fight at the Pyromancer, Space Station nearly took down oh, two, yeah. three members of Trifecta. So as this game draws on, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, I feel, for Trifecta to continuously disengage like that. Well, here comes a Gold Fury pull again. Reset one more time as Aquarius throws out the name. They scary the other front line. Trying to zone them away. Shell was actually used there by Jeff Hindler. So that's a good cooldown. The Trifecta got off one taunt there. Link is down for Sam Fusaka at the same time. This is just a dance around the Gold Fury that Trifecta are really trying to force. Jeff going to get some decent poke out here. Life of the party already expended. Scary D the target, but the he's only sitting at 30%. Jeff Hindler still taking a lot of poke, but Scary D's already dead. Zone wave from Aquarius peels away for a second. Neilmar does find a hammer towards the back line. That man and Paul technically grouped relatively similar together with Sam for soccer was trying to wrap together. One thing in these fights, though, Taco, is the sustain that Space Station Gaming have as well. Baron is going to do a little bit of heal in this game that could make a bit of an impact here. It's already starting to have a little bit of an impact here because Trifecta, they are not feeling all that safe poised up around this Gold Fury. In fact, Neomal... Does manage to catch Neomal, as you say, but he leaps away to safety. Gold Fury still being aggro. Zatman's going to commit the ult to push Space Station away. The Gold Fury is getting low, but it got to reset yet again. Barrow eats an axe to the face. Sam around the back looking for cleanup. But zoned out once more away from the damage dealers of Space Station game. They need some sustain. Sam looking for the Cobra's kiss. Won't find it instead. He's going to get pin. Sumo slammed into the wall. Now getting control from the watery grave. Nice defender of Olympus is going to keep Sam safe and sound here. But the same can't be said for Paul. Well, the problem is, is these fights keep going and Jeff Henley keeps on healing. It doesn't look like a lot in the stats, but look at the health bar difference because of a bit of a sustain here. Trifecta just had Scary D respawn, ult back in, and he's a tank that's already at half health.
Barracuda trying to channel his inner American Sniper with those eagle eye shots onto Zapman, but so far, none of them are going to be able to find a home. Oracle Vision has worn off now. If Trifecta want to contest, it has to be a direct challenge. Well, you're going to smack into Aquarius who returns some reflect damage back yet again. Paul, getting low on health and mana too. Not a situation you want to be in as an all. Zapman's mana relatively low as well. This dance at the goal period has lasted quite a few minutes so far. It's actually delaying experience gain for most of the team. Keep in mind, though, Sam has that last breath available yet again. Aquarius going to back to base now as Sam takes out the ward that was inside of the left mid Harpy's pit. Venenu, Barra, and Andy, I think we're all debating pulling this Gold Fury yet again, but Paul's already on his way back over to double check it. And with Zatman to back him up, both these hunters are about to make the call off to the rest of their team. Hey, Space Station, they're at it again. Benenu jumps up, jumps down, was looking towards Paul, but Paul dashed away straight away. Scary catches Benenu as he dashed back, and the burst damage is raw. Zapman gets the kill on Benenu. Meanwhile, on the backside, San Francisco goes straight to Barracuda. Aquarius trying to zone away, scared the rest of the team as he can, but he's taking a lot of damage too. Luckily enough, San Francisco gets out. Neilmar going straight onto Barracuda, knows that he doesn't have much outside of his teammates to help heal for them, and Barra's he's already alive. realizing what's happening, but Zapman's falling so incredibly low. The root won't connect from Andy, but he doesn't need it. Prana Onslaught to finish the job as Neilmon now still in Draconic form, but with no one left to aggress on and Venenu about to respawn in 10 seconds, I'd say that that might have just been a pretty big win for Space Station. As soon as Venenu spawns, they might even be able to just rush down this Gold Fury. I don't know, you know, because Trifecta in position first. They've got Sampa Soccer and Paul on the way back too. Barracuda did just base as well. I think both teams are probably just going to fall back here. I think this fight around the Gold Fury has actually hindered both teams more than it's helped. Oh, wait. This isn't over yet, Hindu. We're going to stay here for an We hour. get another chapter of, of the Gold Fury saga as Space Station Gaming are all back and healthy now. Still with Zapman, another 14 seconds of respawn. The worst part, though, is that when Zap respawns, he won't have that Darkest Knight available. Now Paul being the direct target. That was a beautiful play from Andy, actually. He saw Paul transform to bow stance and immediately goes aggressive, knowing that he's got to transform back anyway before he can escape. So nice bit of poke on Paul. And this poke will matter. The Space Station Gaming will be looking for picks. Taunt on Aquarius and the focus on the Kuzumbo. But Gold Fury is very low. And Space Station Gaming take it away from Trifecta as Andy punches Paul on the back of the head. No one there to peel, but now Andy's a little bit overextended. Andy's going to avoid the ton at a scary D because he just got out of range with that overhead kick. Neomo already getting sucked back in from that life of the party, and that's going to be a two for nothing exchange on top of the Gold Fury in Space Station's favor. Wait and what was second. once looking like such a promising match for Trifecta yeah. has now completely turned around. The throws of the Gold Fury, I mean, either team could have thrown the game there. Space Station were behind at that point. But because they get two kills, because they got the Gold Fury, because they're gonna get this tier two tower, this is gonna make it an even game at 25 minutes in. And it's not over just yet, Hindu. There's still plenty of buffs in jungle farm available, but I'm looking towards that Pyromancer. Oh God, don't start again. We've just had the, the seven minute escapades of the Gold Fury, and now we're gonna go and dance to the Pyro. Hurry up and kill it, Space Station Gaming. I don't wanna deal with that anymore. They'll do that. Double Hunters don't take too long. And now it's a quick trip back to base, but they can't all base at the same time. Because if they do, Trifecta, they'd like that to happen, to be honest. They want that to happen, yeah. but that's not going to be the case here. Andy and Aquarius still sticking around, although they will start heading back to base now, understanding that Jeff is in the area just in case. Barra's already starting to shift his way back on over to this fire giant. I don't imagine that we'll see either side pull it right away. Even though Trifecta ended up losing out on that Gold Fury exchange, I, I still feel like this is a close enough match between the two of them. It's just that now Space Station are on a level playing field. But then again, because Space Station are on a level playing field, that could be the one reason why this game has shifted out of Trifecta's control. I think Trifecta definitely have to look at their Gold Fury over and over again because there were so many plays around that. that were, in the grand scheme of things, they actually have an advantage there too with the Athena. The Athena could still be off farming, pressuring somewhere else on the map to force something, but... 
different story then. It's now Space Station in control around the fire. Chamber. Over time, it gets harder to keep track of your carries, and yeah. that was the big thing for me. Andy finally found his opening to pick off Paul. Paul jumps back away from the entirety of Trifecta, so there's no one to help try and peel for him, and that's when Andy just collapses. Not sure whether those beads were burnt by Zapman, but they are on cooldown for this fight. Meanwhile, the only other beads down is Andy's in the jungle right now. So this is going to be an interesting one because Zap's going to have to stay relatively safe. But Trifecta still on the aggression. Scary blinked there, looking for a pick. Couldn't find what he was after. But then he got away. Andy taking way more damage than he bargained for. That's the burst of two hunters. And now Aquarius is stuck out in the center of everybody from Trifecta. He's OK, Space though. Station should maybe consider backing off here because Paul and Devin are just swinging away. Aquarius already falling under half health. Nice heal, though, from Jeff. Going to give him some sustain. And this could be Veneno choosing to play up a little bit here, but can't help but feel like that missed life of the party you know, is the primary reason why Andy dies there. I have a feeling that Trifecta should maybe be looking at this Baron. If they can take that down, the sustain the Space Station have on offer when these targets get low isn't going to be available. Yeah, they've got the Sir Cat for anti-heal, but you don't want to be committing it to make sure that happens too. But that's the only anti-heal they have. Just look at all the builds from Trifecta. Yeah. No one has really prioritized any form of anti-heal, kind of just assuming that all responsibility for that, if needed, would fall onto Sam with this Sir Kent. But we've seen now plenty of Baron, and we know him well enough to understand that if there's a Baron on the map, there is very little reason to not try to itemize for lifesteal or anti-heal. It's sneaky heals as well. Like, if you look at the healing numbers, they're not massive, but they are a part of the battle. 4,000 healing, they're in combat because you want to get the heals off of hitting gods. And on top of that, it's the teammates that are getting the heals around the god that's hit as well as around the Baron. So he's able to allow his front line to go in, be aggressive. And when they're in trouble, they fall back and still get the sustains. Uh, keep in mind also the damage numbers exchange so at the very end of team fights. Whenever that stat pops up on the screen, yeah. you notice like these 2,000, 3,000 player damage numbers that are being exchanged, well, you have to subtract at least 1,500 of that from Trifecta for each of the fights, or the, at least each of the core fights that they've had. Just assume that Jeff has healed at least 1,000. So then in comparison, Space Station are probably still dealing like 3K worth of player damage, yeah. and Trifecta are still dealing 3K worth of player damage. But it's technically only around 1,000 to 1,500 when you start factoring in the Baron heals. 30 minutes in, Trifecta led the early game, the mid game. Well, it slowly went towards Space Station gaming with the sustained engagement. So now we're at an even game at the 30 minute mark, all dancing around the fire giant. But good news for the ones that enjoyed the last Gold Fury fight. It's respawning in five seconds time. That was a heavy wake up call though for Andy. If you ask me, I highly doubt that we see him trying to lead the charge any any further. Speaking of which, Go Scary D now and Zabman not gonna waste any time or looking to spend a few minutes extra around this Gold Fury dance. This is the best call you could do though. I mean, these two gods specifically can still impact the fight if Space Station to look towards a fire giant here because Scary D ultimates across and well, you've also got the Darkest of Nights waiting there as well to limit the vision Space Station have. But meanwhile, Veneno is off on the left-hand side, farming up a little bit, pushing out the waves. Scary D's going to match that, so a bit of gold will present for both as Andy loses his Magi's Cloak, as does Sam for Soccer so far in this engagement. I think Andy was also expecting a hammer stun possibly out of Neoma there, expending the overhead kick, but... I kind of wish that Space Station would have just gone. As soon as they didn't see Scary D or Zap for a little bit, I yeah. think they should have just gone in. You've also got the, the issue of, like, we've got the bigger picture, though, you know what I mean? So we can see the overhead view, so it's a lot easier to see that. Neomar's taking a bit more poke than he bargained for there, but he is Fafnir after all, so we can resustain. I want to clarify on it, then. I mean, go in as in just the force trifecta to show their faces. Yeah. I, I want Space Station to That's force fair. Trifecta to burn out the Defender of Olympus, burn out the Darkest Knights, because those are probably two of the more impactful team fighting ultimates Trifecta have in their favor right now. Just know it's all the towers are down on Trifecta's side of the map. And this is because Space Station Gaming have done a good job of finding small windows to get it. Aquarius, though, this watery grave is causing so many problems. Veneno's in the sky, too, and Andy is just hunting down Paul right now. Beautiful taunt though from Scary D is going to prevent the vicious barrage that would have followed up onto a three man root inside of that crystallized curses. That could not have been better played for a disengage there, but Trifecta did have to expend practically everything just to run away. Yep. And now it's up to Nilma and Sam for Soccer to play defense until the rest of the team is back up and running. So one goal for you did go to Trifecta early, but this one, this Pyromancer rather, will go the way of Space Station Gaming. 
they pick it up with Aquarius zoning away, you can start to see the difference. Every single fight that happens, at the end of it, Space Station seems to have a few healthier bars overall when both teams look to disengage. Aquarius relatively low, but he's still because of Mosey gets taunted and bursted, but he's still alive. Query is going to survive a little bit thanks to that shell there out of Jeff Pinlaw, but now Neomaw could be in a whole world of trouble. He's looking to jump away now, but Barracuda coming in with the mounted archery gets a three-man slow. And goes towards Neomaw and gets the kill, but after the fact he's going to back away. The Oddie Bow did such good work that it zaps out. Paul leaps over the wall, no one able to chase, but Zap is on a wild adventure that the Nene Kappa will bring it down. Now it's Sam for soccer, surrounded by five members looking for an exit route, and I don't think he's going to find one. Sam doing everything in his power to try and wait for this ambush to come back up off cooldown, but I think it might have been interrupted from the watery grave. I think the combination of Cousin Bow and Baron is what's really turned this game around. We were, I was hoping Aquarius would make an impact, and he feels like he has. Multiple times, he's taken the initial hit, happy to soak up all the damage because that's what Kuzumbo's there to do. I just know that Trifecta are going to be watching this match back later on tonight or, or something, and they're going to stare at that Gold Fury yeah. period where seven or eight minutes or so of just non-stop back and forth with Space Station and not spending enough time looking for actual farm. Credit where it's due as well for that Witchblade that Andy picked up for item in this game as well. Against so many auto attackers, it's going to be impactful. Scary taunts three or four members as Andy goes aggressive towards Paul. Good jumps back in, misses the mystical rush, but Venenu all the while whacking away on Scurity with the other four members of Space Station Gaming who have the Fire Giant can now just start swinging through the jungle to clear up some camps. This is now Space Station Gaming's game to lose. But that's all that Andy wanted to begin with. He wanted to give that space to Aquarius to control Scary D. Trifecta have struggled without Scary D being alive in some of these past couple of fights. And I think that Space Station, it's not a bad idea to continue looking for this Athena. Scary D has a, a lot of brats and help, but that's ideal for the builds that Benenu and Barracuda have both opted for. You know, talking about Barracuda a little bit more, he has been sneakily playing very well this game. The early game, he struggled and got focused a little bit. The laning phase was rough. But sneakily, slowly but surely, he went from bottom player damage at around 15 minutes to second from top. He was below, bar uh, below the Baron at one point in this game, and now look where he is. He's skyrocketed. Uh, Barra has no fear in this match. After he got out of the laning phase, it just feels like After the horse play a here. switch flicked on. Yes. It was the mount. He mounted archery into Trifecta while they're trying to disengage at the Fire Giant Pit. Not only does he manage to kill Neil, but he also causes Zap and Paul to kind of hesitate on the retreat. Think about turning around, maybe looking to peel for the support, keep another member alive. And then Barra gets a great Heavenly Banner off that pokes out both of them. Not only that, but the Odysseus Bow, proc spread, like you mentioned, also helped to chunk away at their HP bars and, and Space Station. As long as Barra keeps doing what he is, uh, they'll probably be in a pretty good spot here. Well, this is the interest when you get double hunters in the mid and the, the duo lane. About what kind of hunters you bring to the fray and at the moment. The burst potential of Trifecta is wearing off and, try, and now they're on the defense. He's just trying to stop this Phoenix falling. Good spawn! But Wait, it could be enough. working against them right now. Neomar gonna be forced to Draconic Farm, but in the same spot. Life of the Party gonna stun him out right away. Now he's jumping. Now he's trying to escape, but it's too little too late. Neomar is gonna be the next casualty here. And it's still not over yet. One Phoenix already down in this favor of Space Station. Another Phoenix two to fall as well. And Trifecta, only three members left standing. I don't even know if they're going to bother trying to defend the mid Phoenix. No, look at Aquarius' health bar. Look at it as he's tanking up this Phoenix. So just keep an eye on that cousin bow. How much of an impact he's going to make. Backline though, Sam for soccer does find Venenu, which is an important little attempt at a pick there. But Venenu jumps in the wall to safety, so avoids most of the damage. Thanks to that wall ability. All oh, three Phoenixes down. Space Station Gaming looking to take game one. Paul's already been forced to jump back in towards the fountain as Aquarius now taking up everything in front of him. But Venenu is going to be the first one to bring down Scary D. A very fun game between the two to watch. Space Station Gaming come out with a victory, but it cost them a lot in that early game, Taco. Trifecta looked amazing, but... Where did, it all, where did it all go wrong? It really was just that Gold Fury engagement because Space Station were still keeping in mind to farm out those side waves. They're not only in the duo lane, but also in mid lane too. Meanwhile, all of Trifecta, they were a little bit too focused around trying to figure out when they could counter-initiate. 
and they spent so much time coming in, backing, healing up, waiting for relics to come up off cooldown. All the while, Space Station, that was exactly what they needed to happen. They needed that brief lull in the action. And I know there was a lot of action happening sure. in between all of that, but what I'm saying is they had time to basically just catch up and experience. And that was the downfall of Trifecta in this one because they were strong arming Space Station off of the map entirely, mm. but then they just let them buy time for themselves. Well, you guys at home get to vote for who you think was MVP in that game for Space Station. I'm definitely looking towards Aquarius, but then again, he just pressed two. No offense, but that's what <laughs> Cousin Bill does. Um, he made him a big and did a lot of damage too. Anyone else for you? I think it had to be Aquarius or Barra, and now that I've mentioned Barracuda's name, I'm sorry, Aquarius, because you're probably going to lose it to the Barra effect. Maybe he does. Let's go to the desk, though, to break down game one. Game two, right around the corner. Thanks a lot, Hindu. Thanks a lot, Taco. This one, back and forth and back and forth. The tug of war ultimately goes in the way of Space Station gaming. This one was a, a long one. Absolutely. It came down to the mid-game Gold Fury fights. I'm looking at one specific time when Scaredy was a little bit too far forward after life of the party. The rest of his teammates a little bit too far back. Despite Trifecta getting that early gold here, they felt confident to force another 5-on-5 five five fight with about a 5,000 goalie. But when you're not in range to protect your soul laner, you're going to pretty much lose that rest of that team fight. Exactly. You need to be paying attention to everybody. Aquarius did just that. We heard the shout out from the commentators. 4-1 and 10, a fantastic slash line. And sure, I'm looking at the damage, which is actually extremely high but i'm also looking at the damage mitigated there oh yeah when you're able to be the one that is being focused and also essentially top damage i see you barrow with a thousand over it but let's say essentially tied for top damage and top mitigated you are doing the solo dream i think trifecta was just flustered because of aquarius and also because of anister's dive potential i'm leaning back a little bit towards the 25 minute mark where after anister dove paul mm -hmm. on the uler that surrender vote coming through that's got to be some frustration from that mid laner yeah i mean Aqu aquarius has done a great job here and he did frustrate everybody but aquarius frustrated everybody but his own team most valuable player here for the turtle man with the turtle plan aquarius on top of everything like i said he's being focused the most and still able to output the damage the kuzenbo pick against the double hunter composition i will always commend i think it's smart uh, smart team draft and you know hindu was like yeah he kind of just popped the shell he, he did what the pick did but being able to pilot the pick and having the intelligence to select the pick at all. I think that's part of the conversation. It's probably the best amount of control for an anti-hunter pick. I'm thinking Osiris, oh. I'm thinking Bologna, I'm thinking Odin, but those don't really give you that much control compared to the Kuzin, though. That ultimate watery grave, like, what are you going to do against all these little mini knockups? That man <laughs> having to use the beats just to use Ryzen Jaguar, right? And still dies to the Nene. And that's the second time, right? The, the, the one before where you heard me giggling was also a little... Uh, Nay, nay, over here, and he walks over here, and we see the kill feed happen, and just strong stuff from Aquarius, absolutely.